give you everything Come and take your Can't everything going back to what I used to know But please hold my Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Ikamala Mutinsi, Wagon Guveni, and welcome to day two of Exodus Party. God is so good, guys. I've been prepping this word, now, and I am so excited to share. I'm so excited to share. <laughs> God is so good. Um, yeah, so I think let's pray. Let's pray. I hope you have your Bibles, notepads, as well as pens already. And yeah, as pen as in. Holy Spirit, thank you for being our friend. Thank you for being the friend that we never knew we needed. We invite you to keep being in control, to speak over our lives and do what only you can do. Take control, you be king, you be Lord. Study wisdom, study knowledge, study understanding, and ask for the grace to be able to apply whatever word we'll be getting today um, into our lives, onto our lives. Thank you, Lord, and amen. Okay, guys, okay. So today we are doing Exodus chapter 2, and um, just before then, Izolo, we ended off on chapter 1, and where we learned Uguti, we need to be bold and fearless and not shrink for anyone especially when it comes to the things of god or whatever it is that he has placed in our hearts regardless of what your circumstances um look like or say now, whatever god puts in motion absolutely nobody and nothing can stop it his will always prevails so, um, and that then introduces the importance of being in alignment with the Lord, walking in his will, walking in his purpose for each and every one of our lives, because we are here for a reason. And then the biggest thing also, and something that we need to be careful of, is not to be stumbling blocks or um, um, stumbling blocks to the will of God or purpose or God's purpose over the next person's life prevailing. So do what you can. Love your neighbor. Help them. Love them as you love yourself. So when your neighbor is in need, help them because that is you playing a role, your yeah, midwife over their lives and God will definitely reward you for that. So now let us read or chapter two. It's pretty long, but then I think we always need to read the full chapter first and then um, so we get context and then we dissect it. Let's go. Exodus chapter two verses one reads, now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and peach. And then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. 5. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to go get it. She sent, she opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Seven, then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go to get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. One day after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them in their hard labor. 
he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. Glancing on this way and that and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. 13. The next day he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked the one in the wrong, why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me the same way you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, what I did must have become known. When Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian, where he sat down by a well. 16. Now a priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and fill the troughs to water their father's flock. Some shepherds came along and drove them away, but Moses got up and came to their rescue and watered their flock. When the girls returned to Rubel, their father, he asked them, Why have you returned so early today? They answered, An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherd, and he even drew water for us and, watched the, and watered the flock. And where is he? He asked his daughters. Why don't you leave him? Invite him to have something to eat. 21. Moses agreed to stay with the man who gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses in marriage. Zipporah gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Geshem, saying, I have become an alien in a foreign land. 23. During that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help became, and their cry, and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. Twenty four. God heard their groaning, and He remembered His covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites, and He was concerned about them. Okay, <laughs> now now that the not so fun part is over, um, let's dissect it. So, verses 1, Oti, now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son when she, and gave birth to a son. So, I just want to pause a bit there. The, a man from the house of Levi married a Levite woman. In Genesis, um, there was a point where as U Jacob was about to pass on, so it was a thing where when the dad is about to pass on, they called all of their kids, gave them their blessings, spoke life over them and all of that. So U Jacob had 12 sons and um, so he called them all and one of the sons was Levi. So that's where the tribe comes from because when he gave them their blessings, he also told them, you are going to be 12 tribes. So those were the 12 tribes of Israel, basically. So the Levi, Levi tribe is actually one of the tribes of, um, one of, Jacob's sons, basically. And you'll also notice, Ruti, when you think too much, you realize, Ruti, my mind is insect, la, insect. Because um, I guess it was cousins or siblings that got married to each other and had a child, but that's neither here nor there. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could not hide him any longer, she got a piper's basket for him and coated it with tar and peach. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. I realized Uwuti, she was fearless and bold, like we agreed to be going to start being in the previous chapter. But then she was fearless and bold and she had faith, Uwuti, regardless of um, her circumstances, regardless of the slavery that they are, that is their reality on a daily basis in Egypt, she still wasn't willing to let go of her son. She still 
um, didn't uh, succumb to the circumstances or to the environment. And many a times, I'm sure if you look at your life, there's so many things that are happening, so many negative things that are happening in our lives on a daily basis. Like I realized which when I'm on TikTok, the one minute I'm, sli I'm, I'm smiling and almost teary-eyed looking at a cute baby and the next video is an accident and so many people died and then the next video, it's so many things that are happening in and around the world um, around us that are negative and also positive stuff are happening but then the point of it is Uwuti circumstances her circumstances were not allowing for her to have as much faith as she did but she got up and trusted God used what she had what is it that you have around you that you can use to change your situation what is it that the Lord says he will bless the work of our hands so how are you using your hands what is it that is around you that you can use to show God would say, Lord I, I here I am I am trusting you here I am with a bit of flour and oil and I'm going to make this cake but then it is you that um, will see me through like customers and um, getting more customers and getting financing or funds to grow that business or to pay for your tuition fees in order to um, grow in your career and things like that. So what is it that you have in your hands? And we're learning that from this lady. Then Ufo Uti, his sister stood at a distance, at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Farah's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. With this, I am seeing the hand of God. So you've done what you can do with all that you have. You've got faith and you believe that God will make something of it. Then he comes in in a mighty way. So this lady did not allow um, the for her son to be killed, basically. She did what she did. She, 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 she had faith. She believed in the Lord. She used what she could to save what she had. And the Lord saw her and helped her through. So do your best and God will do the rest, basically. So this is God doing the rest, whereas the the the, 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 the waterproof basket is um, cruising on the Nile. Um, she orchestrates with the right people see this basket, the right, the, 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 the key people, the um, um, midwives in this situation see this basket and when this lady um sees which is a hebrew child but then this baby was crying and he was so beautiful and healthy and all of that she felt sorry for him and then his sister asked pharaoh's daughter shall i go and get one of the hebrew women to nurse the baby for you i'm also just taken aback by the bravery of this little girl like who who does that and it can only be God it can really all be God because she got there and asked the right questions it's like she took words or like thoughts out of her head and wow and, and and she was there at the right time then I also learned Uwuti it was actually a thing Uwuti um I, I I can nurse the next person's um a baby and it was actually a paid profession. It's called wet nursing. Yeah, check out wet nursing. Um, it was a thing. Uwuti, I can um, nurse the next person's baby, like breastfeed and all, but then um, it's a baby that I haven't given birth to. Seven, then his sister asked Farah's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she said. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. I feel also, Ruti, this is a full circle moment. Whatever is for you will locate you. Um, nine, Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. 
she named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. So that is the birth of Moses, you guys. And then verses 11, it is, one day after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. Another version is he watched them with compassion. He felt sorry for them. Um, he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. Glancing on this way and that way and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. This tells me Ubutu Moses is human. Ubutu Moses in the story is human and I know in your heart of hearts there's certain things that you have done that you are not proud of but then see how God still uses the blemished and the dirty and the muddy you um, being Moses in this instance. Glancing this way and that way and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. So Moses is a murderer at this point. Um, the next day, he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked the one in the wrong, why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought what I did must have been known. What he did was definitely known. And this just also tells me, Uguti, there is absolutely nothing that you can do in the darkness that won't come to light, basically. So um, let's, 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 let's strive to live holy lives. Let's, let's. Let's strive to live on like clean records, be holy, um, pursue God, want to be like Jesus. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, that is possible. 15. When Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Median, where he sat down by a well. So I searched where Median was. It was um, about 1,500 kilometers away from Egypt and by foot <laughs> I'm sure he traveled a long time and now it is Saudi Saudi Arabia yeah 16 now a priest of Median had seven daughters and they came to draw water and fill the troughs to water their father's flock some shepherds came along and drove them away, but Moses got up and came to their rescue and watered their flock. So Moses la, he was hero. Imagine being bullied. <laughs> Imagine being bullied, and I'm sure this was their life because they come from a family where it's only girls and um, daddy's work still needs to be done. The flock, flocks and his vegetation need to be tended to and taken care of and all of that. So imagine how hard their lives were and the relief that they had when Moses came to their rescue on this specific day. Also, I can't help but think how I need my husband. I don't want to say we need men. <laughs> We need our brothers, guys. They make life very easy for us. They really do. 18. When the girls returned to Rubel, um, Uchetro, their father, he asked them, Why have you returned so early today? They answered, An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. And where is he? He asked his daughters. Why don't you leave him? Invite him to have something to eat. Yeah, 21. Moses agreed to stay with the man who gave him his daughter Uzipo to marry to Moses in marriage. Uzipo gave birth to a son and Moses named him Geshem. So the meaning of Geshem is stranger and he named him saying that I have become an alien in a foreign land. I have become a stranger in a foreign land. Then um, 23, during that long period, the king of Egypt died and the long period, another, uh, the amplified version, it's about 40 years passed. So this is summarized into 
just a stuffing and an egg but then years go by years go by so Tini Tri Oti during that long period the king of Egypt died the Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out and they cried for help because of their slavery went up to God God heard their groaning he remembered his covenant with Abraham with Isaac and with Jacob so God looked on the Israelites and he was concerned about them. Another version is he felt sorry for them. So um, with this, I also remembered Uguti. Absolutely, there's absolutely nothing that we go through in this life comes as a surprise to God. Um, I remember when uh, studying the book of Genesis, there was an instance where when the Lord was in a conversation with Abraham and blessing him and saying what he is the he is the um, he is the father of nations and all of that. He also mentioned Wuti, um, there's gonna be a time when your nation being the Israelites are going to be in captivity and they are going to be in captivity for four hundred and thirty years in total. Ne? But then um, he said they are going to be in captivity for about 400 years and um, But then you are not going to see that next phase in their lives because you would have passed on and Yeah, so with reading this the Lord remembered them. He felt sorry for them But then he always knew what was going to happen and Because it needs to be done. He let it happen and we will see this unfold in the next chapters but then the point of it is god is with you regardless of what you are going through however hard the situation people are losing people uh people are having um, difficulties financially and um, businesses are not popping plans are not going accordingly and things like that but then may we align with the lord may we align with the lord may we know what his purpose and plan is for for us the same God that was able to reveal his plans and how um, the, 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 the journey of the Israelites to Abraham and us seeing it unfold in the book of Exodus you realize which is the same God that can do just that for us so with the help of the Holy Spirit God speaks God speaks and may we have discernment to hear him when he speaks and do just what he says so that um, you don't waste time basically you don't waste time <laughs> and yeah guys so that is where yeah so God is in your story God sees your situation God is with you and everything in our lives happens for a reason and a season and that is where we're going to close our bible study for today i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something i hope the holy spirit nudged your heart and showed you which way is it that you can apply this word and um thank you so much for being here i'll see you tomorrow stay blessed <laughs> Keep going back